Hi, oh, it's Philip here. You know, sometimes you come across passages either in your own reading or, the, or someone highlights them for you in a conversation. They use a text and you think, wow, I don't think I've heard that one before. Um, or as I say, reading the scriptures and you just come along something that just really strikes you. And it feels like a confluence both of, I maybe have not heard of that text before. I mean, the Bible is a pretty big book. Uh, and even if you've read it, and I've read the whole, whole Bible through, uh, so I've read everything. Reading it all doesn't mean that you take it all in. And, and there are there are times when the, the text that you read years ago, or even recently, didn't make any impact. Until an event happens, or there's a season in your life where it really connects. Or the way that someone shares it with you, they're able to, to open it up a little bit so that you can see that there was some hiddenness and a hidden uh, richness and, and joy to it. Uh, so I want to share one that came to me, uh, rem- I was reminded of this morning. I was waiting for uh, a car to get its warrant and um, I was wandering around Tarapa, our local, well it's not really local, it's, that's why I was wandering around Tarapa, uh, a really good um, mechanic over Tarapa that was referred to me and recommended to me I should say. So I had about an hour to kill and I was wandering her up and down to Rapa Strait and I uh, put uh, a podcast in for a bit of time and then I decided to sit down on this rock in this shade of a building and got my journal out and began to write. And I knew, of course, I wanted to do a, a another video for my channel this morning and, um, and was working on some things. But the stuff that I've been working on recently, I just didn't want to share just yet. I want to develop it a little bit more. Um, and so as I was sitting there in the shade of this building, out of the sun, this particular verse came to mind, and it's out of Isaiah 50. In fact, it took me, I didn't think I'd be able to find it, because I'd never heard it before until a friend of mine shared it with me, and I didn't commit the, well, I hadn't thought that, I hadn't, that, that I'd committed the text um, to, to, to mind. I remember really the content of it, but I didn't think I'd better find it. Anyway, I did, almost immediately, Isaiah 50, that was what I thought it might have been, and so it was. And here's the text. Isaiah 50, verse 10 to, oh, so it's 10 and 11. Who among you fears the Lord, and obeys the word of his servant? Let him who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord, and rely on his God. But now, all you who light fires, and provide yourselves with flaming torches, go, walk in the light of your fires, and of the torches you have set ablaze. This is what you shall receive from my hand. You will lie down in torment. So I, the the way that this guy shared it with me, it, it was possibly more the timing in which it was shared in the context of the conversation we were already having, right? It was one of those moments where we were talking about something, and he used that text as an illustration of of what we were talking about and in, in the way that scriptures referred to it. And what struck me about the text and about the conversation we were having was it starts off with an idea of uh, who tr- who really trusts God? Who, who really does trust God? If you are in darkness, trust God. And that, that's what struck me. There's a lot in Isaiah. If anyone really pulls a text out of Isaiah, often it'll be to do with the, the rising of light. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Isaiah 60, the great text that refers to the coming of the of the Messiah, the light that is born into the world. There's a lot of reference made out of Isaiah's texts to do with living in light. But this one has a particular uh, nuance to it that, that hit me then and hits me now. Um, and as, I, as that text was brought to my mind, the conversation I'd had, and as I sat there in the cool of a building in the shade out of, out of the sun, sitting on a rock, writing my journey, that there was something about, and, and, and related to where I'm at, um, just in my own faith journey as well, uh, I was struck by the suitedness of that text and how much um, comfort I took from it. The, the comfort's this. Now, in my journey over 45 years, I've had seasons of living in those those blessed lit times, right? You know, when... God feels close. God seems active. There don't seem to be barriers between um, God and your, <coughs> excuse me, uh, God and yourself. There's just a, a goodness and an easiness there. Everything's bathed with light. Everything is glistening and and covered with God's sparkle dust. 
and I don't mean to sound flippant, but there's a sense of, of real, of real uh, transcendence would be the word, I suppose. That life is just lit with an inner glow and an exterior glow. That the, the spirit on, on the inside is, is, um, is on fire and seeing how the world around us there's not just one burning bush that Moses discovers that suddenly your eyes are open to see that every bush is burning. Those are an amazing season to be in. And, and I've had those. The truth, though, is I have had far more living in darkness, far more seasons of not knowing at all where things were going. Uh, one illustration I once gave when someone asked where I was at years and years ago, it was I said, look, the... The picture that comes to mind, and it seems strange, is that God has placed me in his breast pocket and he's walking around doing what God does and I'm with him, but I'm in the dark. I have no idea where we're going, no idea what's happening. I know that th something's happening. I know I know that there is a journey being undertaken. I just, I, I'm being carried. I'm blind and I'm, I'm in the dark and I don't know. And, and there's something about this text in Isaiah 50 that connects me to that experience. Not just that one though, but really when I sat and began to write about some of these dark times, I would say more often than not, that has been my journey with God. Real highlights, real seasons of joy, real seasons of ease, and many long, extended, dry, dark seasons. And I'm in one now. And have been for several years. Um, and when I first went into one, it really unnerved me. And I remember sitting on my porch at home uh, with my Bible in, in the, in, on a Sunday morning, Bible and journal, the things that had been so illuminating for me then when I was in my early 20s, only to find, and, and sitting there going, God, where have you gone? It was, it was, you know, just a very tiny version of Christ's, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because I knew that I hadn't left, but he had disappeared. He was invisible to me and, and it was a darkness over me and I didn't know what to do. And I know I've talked about this before, but, you know, these are these are seasons that perhaps don't get talked about a lot in church. And my comfort in this text is that the text speaks to it in a positive way. On two levels. One, it speaks to it positively because it affirms that that's a reality. That you can be trusting God and be totally in the dark. In fact, it wouldn't be unfair to say that when you are totally in the dark, not knowing what God's doing, and even if you're crying out to God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is an act of trust because your declaration of abandonment is pointed toward the God that you feel abandoned by. It is still an act of engagement and trust and and um, submission to the God that you say you follow. Um, to be able to direct the, the, the sense of abandonment toward the one you feel abandoned by is in itself a, a willingness to engage in that relationship, even a desperation to. Um, so the, the, this, this text affirms the fact that we go through those seasons, and, and it affirms my journey. It says this is... This is the journey. This is part of what it is to be a follower of God. It is to be in times of darkness, not knowing what's going on, not knowing the way out, not knowing what to do to fix it. The second part of it that I find comforting is the, the robust challenge that the writer makes. The writer who is on, at, at the start of it feels like it's Isaiah, and at the end of it sounds like it's the Lord speaking. Uh a robust challenge to those who reject the darkness, pursuing the light. What I think he's talking about there, and this I guess is where the conversation I had initially came from, was the feeling like being a pastor certainly can feel like you're supposed to be certain. You're supposed to know the answers to the problems you see before you that you are not supposed to be in the dark. You're supposed to be the illuminated one. You're supposed to be the one who is enlightened, who can see where to go, the visionary, the one who, who can see the problem and in seeing the problem sees the solution. But this text written by Isaiah, uh, and, and 
from what I understand of them, he, he is a brilliant, brilliant author, a, a genius level kind of guy. And yet is able to affirm the uh, times when you don't know what to do. Now, if that's true for Isaiah, then it's most definitely going to be true for me. I'm not as smart as Isaiah. I'm not as smart as most people. If he can affirm the fact that we come into seasons of darkness with the Lord and are to resist the temptation to find solutions to that darkness, to go about building fires, go about trying to create answers, to, to go about building, creating torches, lighting torches and, and shining our way, uh, or lighting bonfires that, that we can use to, to light the area that we're in. Uh, if we can resist that, then we are showing an act of faith and trust in the Lord. In my experience, that has come back as um, a lack of vision, a lack of leadership, uh, a sort of a naivety, a uh, perhaps a lack of spirituality, not being in tune enough with God to know what's going on. All sorts of condemnation around the admission of being in darkness, I've experienced. Now, I don't know where you're at, and you're not a, most likely not a pastor. But you might know what those experiences are like, and you might also know what it feels like, the tension that you feel within a religious community to be enlightened, to, to be so spiritually in tune with God, particularly if you have some kind of leadership role, whether it be a life group leader or you feel like you are being asked to mentor someone. Now, we're human, and all of us, no matter how mature, find ourselves in dark places. In fact, I would argue that maturity and darkness often go together. If you haven't experienced times when you don't know where God is and, and a sense of sitting in darkness waiting on the Lord, if you haven't walked through those journeys and come out the other side going, wow, I survived the journey and didn't try and light my own lights and try and set up bonfires so I could see my own way. I I allowed God to be God in the situation, including turning off the lights if that was his will. There's a lot of growth that happens in that, in that whole process. Um, so I take a lot of comfort from that text. I take a lot of a comf comfort from it just, just now in my life. Um, there's a lot of issues in my life I have no answers to. And um, and I would say that's you know true within my personal life, within my spiritual life, within uh, my discipleship life, within the church life. Because of the position I'm in and the way that I see life, I see lots of issues. And and I know that's a, you know, that's a, that's a, a, on one hand, a gift to be able to see the problems and even see where they're sort of dwelling in. But I've hardly ever had solutions that worked. Um, so I find myself sitting in the dark, uh, comforted only by the fact that the Lord himself sat in that same darkness, a deeper darkness of my own. And instead of trying to resist it or extract himself from it, save himself from it, pull himself out of it, he submitted to the Father and um, and was rewarded with the resurrection. And so, of course, final point then, as we head in slowly but surely through Lent towards, uh, and you can certainly consider this a Lent and talk, if you like, journeying through loss and sacrifice toward, toward the, the Easter story, uh, we are getting to Resurrection Sunday. We are getting to the dawning of the new dawn, the, the scene in John, which is so evocative of new creation, where... Mary discovers this person in the garden. The body of Jesus has gone. It's early in the morning. It's dawn time. And she mistakes the person who happens to be Jesus for a gardener. A gardener in a garden with an empty tomb at dawn. That's the true light. Uh, that's the true light. That is the, that is the light we can hope for. And the only light we should be yearning for, which is the light of God intervening, God rescuing, God bringing life through recreation, and I know one thing is true, I cannot make life happen. Uh, I find myself over and over again in, um, entombed and surrounded by darkness, surrounded by more problems and solutions, and back to where I need to be, trusting the Lord, trusting the Father who alone knows what is happening and who is utterly and totally faithful and good and will bring resurrection. I am absolutely sure of that. Doesn't make what I'm going through easy, but it does put it into context and it does make it meaningful and it does mean I don't do it alone. 
Anyway, I don't know where you're at, but I hope that that was comforting and encouraging for you. If you are in a season of, of joy and ease and, and, it's, and it's light and transcendent and sparkly dust, lean into it. Enjoy it. Embrace it as the gift that it is. Don't get confused and think that that's, you've reached the pinnacle. Um, because Christians go to, to crosses and into darkness. Um, but lean into it and enjoy it and embrace it and learn what the Lord has to teach you in it. Um, so that when you are in darkness, you can remind yourself of that. You remind yourself that you are a beloved child of God and that the darkness that you're going through isn't a sign of God's disapproval necessarily, unless you are in rebellion, um, but a sign of God's next phase for you, next part of your journey in growing up. So anyway, those are my thoughts for today. God bless you and uh, see you soon. Peace.